Hi guys, this is one of Grandad's ideas, just going to try something. Um, some of you may know that people regularly use a bungee cord and a long string to launch their gliders. Well, I think they also do them for power um, aircraft as well, but particularly for gliders, you screw this into the ground, it's a dog lead or a dog stake, you attach the lead to there and I'm going to try out this elastic shock cord it's not the sort of stuff people normally use uh, they usually use the sort of rubber that you use for catapults or slingshots but I spotted this in the home base which is one of those DIY stores five millimeters by 15 meters long high elasticity and ideal for securing light loads and on the other side it says elastic shock cord natural rubber core with braided polypropylene cover high elasticity ideal for securing light loads stored on a reloadable reel so I'm going to try that. You need a length of that attached to that and then you have some cord attached to that um, that goes to the plane and you have a bit of a parachute or a flag or something on the end of the cord so that when it does finally get released you can see it coming down and find it again. It should also help pull it off the hook on the bottom of the glider. I'm taking the picture now, it's actually quite late at night, but it's just so I don't forget to do a picture before I use it. Just going to have a look at this elastic shock cord as they call it. Got it from home base. See if it might be any good for bungee launch for the gliders. Uh, bungee launch, they also call it high start launch. So I'm going to use the screw-in dog stake, which we can screw into the grass over there somewhere. Then I'll attach this and I'll pull it, see what sort of um, tension we get on it. And also let it go and see how fast it moves. Most people for the high launch stuff use medical rubber tubing but I saw this in the shop probably a year ago actually quite a while ago and bought it on spec as they say just to try it out and I've never got around to trying it yet so we'll have a look it's actually 15 meters of it which is more than enough for this garden but I just want to get some sort of idea before we try and take it out in the field and use it for the plane, you'd actually attach a piece of, well, I'll call it string for now, non-stretchable line to the end of this, and then that line's what you attach to your plane. Right, well there's no way of demonstrating a 15 metre length of that cord in my garden, because my garden's only about 5 metres long. So... I'm going to retie it just so we've got a shorter length, just so we can have a look at me stretching it and letting it go. One of the things I wanted to try was to see what sort of knot we could tie that would be secure on the bungee, on the cord. And I don't remember what this knot is called, but I'll demonstrate it. taught a long time ago. You make a loop like that and as they say a rabbit comes out of the hole, goes round the tree and goes back down the hole. And then you pull it tight. And that one's going to stay there. You could also put an extra 
turn on it if you wanted to. But that seems to work. And the advantage of that sort of knot is you just push that back over that way and it all comes loose and you can take it apart. So, I'll make this about three metres long and then we'll try that. Right, this is only very general or very rough measurements that we're doing here. That's about five metres. I said three metres but I've just measured it. I've got about five metres of the bungee cord there. Or the elastic shock cord as it called it. So I'll just walk backwards. say that's about double the length at the moment and that's about three kilograms tension on there can't go much further but that feels like that's pulling quite tight up to five kilograms pull there I'll measure how far I've walked backwards in a minute, but what I'll do now is I'll take it off there and just release it and see how quickly it goes. As I say, this is only very rough and ready, just to give me some idea of what we've got here. So, would that be enough to lift an aeroplane? One way to find out, I suppose. Right, I've just paced that out and I'm about 12 metres away from the stake. So we, we doubled its length there and I'm just reading the instructions here. Do not stand in direct line of tension length and never extend by more than two, sorry, more than twice the unstretched length. So that is about its limit, what we've done there. So I'm going to have to rig up a glider, aren't I? And see what happens. The next thing we need is some line to attach the plane, or the glider, to the bungee cord. And it's supposed to be non-stretchy. So I've bought this crab line. Don't know how long it is, doesn't tell us on the label, I don't think. Nah. But I thought this would be useful for two purposes. It's a handy winder for kite strings, but we should also be able to use this cord. the um, connection to the glider because that's not stretchy stuff that's pretty strong stuff I'll measure it out well I've only paced it out not measuring it properly but I reckon that's about 12 meters we've got there so we've got 12 meters of this cord and 15 meters of bungee cord So I've got to make a loop to go onto the plane. You need a parachute or something to help drag it off the hook on the plane. And that's an aeroplane flying overhead. Interrupting my voiceover. For the end of our tow line, we need a parachute. So I'm going to use this one that I bought in Wilco. I was doing lots of toy parachute videos. I've got 
got a key ring there. I'm going to sew it to the top to hold it in place. I'll take the little man off and attach the bottom of the parachute to my tow line. And then I'll attach my tow line to the bungee or whatever it was called. To that stuff. I'm not quite sure which of my gliders to try this high high start launch or bungee launch on. I could do the little glider. Add a tow hook under here somewhere. There's several different places people suggest to put the tow hook. My mind tells me to put it more or less on the front of the wing here. Under the fuselage, obviously. I should be able to fit one quite easily to this glider. Same sort of idea down here somewhere. Don't know about the flying wing. Technically that should work the same way. I could just try it on this styrofoam or pizza tray glider I made on holiday. Again, that hook would have to be back here somewhere. I'm tempted just to put a hook on this one anyway and use it as a catapult launch. But it would be interesting to mount a hook back here somewhere and see if it could actually be launched. The thing with this bungee or um, yeah, whatever we call it, is it will be relatively heavy. So as it's pulling the plane forwards, it's also pulling it down because it's heavy. That's why you have the, the thinner cord. So that's the weight it's supporting, not that weight. That weight can stay fairly near the ground as it's contracting. But this is the bit that's whipping the plane up into the air. Or at least that's how I interpret the way it works. I may be completely wrong. Wouldn't be the first time. But anyway, I need to put a hook on there. Possibly on there. And probably on there. And certainly for the bigger planes, I'm thinking of using some of these bits of plywood from these press-out kits that I've been making. If I... Can't really see that, can we? Just there, we've got a natural hook. So if I cut round there, and back there somewhere, and glue the majority of that into the foam of the body, then we've just got a hook sticking out. Lost it for the um, ring to sit over. I'll cut one out and glue it in place, and you'll see what I mean. Well, there's me bit of wood, my hook. So I'll now cut a slot along here and glue it in. I just had a quick look at a video by Bob. Cool or Cull, K-U-H-L, where he's showing how to do high launch starts and he shows the hook being just in front of the centre of gravity. Well, yeah, that's a fair bit in front of the centre of gravity but not as far forward as I was thinking of putting it. So we will see. I would imagine the position makes a difference as to what angle it launches at angle of attack. 
And I think the closer to the centre of gravity, the steeper the climb. There's one hook on that one, and one hook on that one. I may have them a bit too far forwards. We'll find out when we try flying it. I'm guessing if I have them too far forwards, they're not going to go up at a very steep angle. We need a loop on the bungee cord, or elastic shock cord as it was called, so that we can attach the, I'll call this the flying line for want of a better phrase. This is the bit that gets attached to the plane, and the other end of it gets attached to here. So I need to bind this up tight. So we've got a loop. I've got some kite um, line here. So let's see if I can use that. Start it off with a knot like that and bind it. But we'll soon find out if it works. If it comes loose when we're trying to fly the planes. That seems to have worked. Well, I've sewn that ring onto the top of the parachute. I've actually given it a test pull using the scales and I think the weakest point of my setup here is actually that key ring because it's quite a thin key ring and I think that's going to bend but we're going to try it so key ring on the top of the parachute the other end of the parachute is tied to my flying line as I'm calling it and then the other end of that flying line is tied to the bungee or the elastic shock cord so I'll wind it all up around there and we'll be ready to try it out <laughs> 